Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Head of Robespierre, the Tyrant of Terror. One of the leading figures in the French Revolution, and also the Reign of Terror, that came after was Maximilien Robespierre. Robespierre was a brutal man who championed the executions of over 17,000 people who were marched into public squares in France, where they were executed on the guillotine. His idea was that using terror and fear would stop people from questioning the new order, and Robespierre wanted to stamp out all of the notions and feelings of monarchy that could be found within the French civilians. But despite the guillotine blade falling dozens of times a day across the country, Robespierre himself would fall from grace, and he was executed himself. People got tired of the fear, and Robespierre was executed on the same guillotine as King Louis XVI in Paris at the Palace de la Revolution. After his death, his head was then subjected to a cast by Madame Tussauds, and this shows the harrowing final moments of the man regarded by many as the despotic tyrant. But what is the story of the head of Robespierre? Maximilien Robespierre was born at Arras on the 6th of May 1758. As a young man, he would study law, but he then took a leap into politics and local government inside of his hometown. He would join the Estates General, but across the nation many people were getting fed up with the monarchy and the king and the queen. There was a huge amount of suffering inside of France as prices rose and people began to starve, but King Louis XVI and his queen Marie Antoinette were living a very lavish lifestyle. They were having huge banquets and spending a huge amount of money from the treasury on furniture and renovating their palaces. People in France needed help, but Marie continued to spend a lot of money on jewellery, clothing, and she would also gamble lots away at her parties. Robespierre then emerged as a leading figure with the idea of revolution, and he became a figure who championed democracy and was regarded as a radical. He hated and loathed the king and queen, and he would oversee the Jacobins, a group who promoted the idea of revolution in France, and they also championed the overthrow and abdication of the French monarchy. Robespierre would call upon people in the nation to rise up and rebel against the military defeats and the fact they were starving, but Robespierre campaigned following the king's arrest for the monarch to be placed on trial for treason, and he would then push further for the king to be executed. He would eventually get this, but inside of Paris he was a man who was very popular. Robespierre's statement and rhetoric continued to attack the monarchy and he would call for reform. But he was then, in the August of 1792, elected the first deputy for Paris to the National Convention. The convention would abolish the monarchy and declare France a republic. The king, as mentioned, was then placed on trial and Robespierre supported this and the king would then be dragged to the Palace de la Revolution in January of 1793, where he lost his head on the guillotine. But there would then be a significant struggle for power within the National Convention following this, and there was tension between the Jacobins and the Girondins as to who would spearhead the new government. The groups wanted different things, and the Jacobins would then order the arrest of the Girondins, and they would use mob rule to do this but the control of France then passed to the Committee of Public Safety, of which Robespierre was a part of, and he would then emerge as a powerful part of this committee. However, in France, there was a huge threat from foreign invasion, and many, including the Austrians and the Persians, were angry with the fact the king and soon-to-be queen were attacked and were executed. The monarchs of these countries were mostly concerned that the ideas of revolution could spread to their countries, but because of this, Robespierre then began to call for strong answer, and there was a huge amount of lawlessness and disorder across the country. The committee then sought to eradicate anyone who was an enemy of the revolution, or who was suspected of doing this. This is known as the Reign of Terror, and Robespierre was a powerful figure who was in charge of this. He would state this was necessary, and spoke to the crowds and said, if the basis of popular government in peacetime is virtue, then the basis of popular government during a revolution is both virtue and terror. Virtue without which terror is baneful, terror without which virtue is powerless. 
Terror is nothing more than speedy, severe and inflexible justice. It is thus an emendation of virtue. It is less a principle in itself than a consequence of the general principle of democracy, applied to the most pressing needs of the homeland. The terror was a brutal and barbaric time, and many people who were just suspected of being dissident to the new regime were dragged to the guillotine and were executed. France was being ruled by terror, and everyone had to be careful about what they said for fear of execution. A huge number of laws were brought in, then carried a capital charge, including cutting down a tree of liberty, or speaking out for the former king and queen. There were accounts of women whose husbands would be taken to the guillotine, and when they lost their heads, the wives would cry. This was interpreted by the officials as an act of sympathy for the old regime, and because of this, seconds later, the women were beheaded on the guillotine. The streets would run red with the blood of the condemned on the guillotine, but eventually Robespierre would fly too close to the sun, and he too would be executed. As he became more powerful and more like a dictator, his popularity would fall. He would state to the National Convention that they should bring a new religion for the nation, the cult of the supreme being. However, Robespierre was now a symbol of hatred due to the brutality of terror, and many said he was acting like a tyrannical monarch, and they'd just got one of these on the guillotine. There were a number of French successes with the army, but Robespierre was now in danger. He was arrested, along with his friend and allies, on the 27th of July, 1794, after rebels conspired against him. He was injured in the arrest and struggle, and a bullet hit him in the jaw. But the following day, he would be dead. Eyewitnesses would see his brutal downfall, and one of them wrote a detailed account of his final moment. He wrote, At four in the afternoon, the sinister procession moved out to the courtyard of the Palais de Justice. No crowd of such size had ever been seen in Paris. The streets were choked with people, spectators, men and women of all ages, filled every window, and men had climbed onto the rooftops. There was a universal jubilation coupled with popular fury. The long-suppressed hatred against these criminals now exploded with doubled force. Everyone applauded wildly and seemed to be sorry they could not do more. Most of the watchers fixed their gaze on the cart in which Robespierre, his brother, Caution and Henry were riding. These miserable creatures were all mutilated and covered with blood. They looked like a band of brigands the Jondams had surprised in the forest and were unable to arrest without inflicting serious wounds upon them. It would be difficult to describe the appearance of Robespierre. His face was wrapped in a bandage of dirty, blood-stained linen. His features were horribly disfigured. A pale pallor made it even more repulsive. He kept his eyes downward and almost closed. Whether that was from the pain of his wounds or an awareness of his misdeeds, one cannot say. Just before arriving at the place of execution, Robespierre was shaken out of his lethargy by a woman who forced her way through the crowd and rushed up to the cart carrying this cannibal. She grasped the cart rail with one hand and threatened Robespierre with the other, saying, "'Monster spewed from hell. The thought of your punishment intoxicates me with joy.' Robespierre opened his eyes and looked her sadly as she said, "'Go now, evildoer, go down into your grave carrying the curse of the wives and mothers of France.'" When the cart had reached the foot of the scaffold, the executioners carried the tyrant down and laid him out, prone, until it was his turn for execution. While his accomplices were being beheaded, Robespierre appeared not to be taking notice. He kept his eyes shut and did not open them until he himself was carried up the scaffold. Some said that when he saw the instrument of death, he heaved a sigh of pain but before dying, he had to endure bitter suffering. After having thrown down his coat, the executioner roughly tore away the bandage and splint which the surgeons had put on his wounds. This unhinged his lower jaw from the upper jaw and caused the blood to flow in torrents. The wretched man's head was now no more than an object of horror and repulsion – 
when at last it was severed from his body, the executioner held it up by the hair to show the people. It presented a indescribably horrible sight. Thus perished the fiercest of the savage beasts, the most monstrous criminal that nature ever conceived. On the two days that followed, 83 other rebels were put to death, mainly members of the commune or their outlawed accomplices. But at some point, Madame Tussaud would craft a death mask and a head of Robespierre. She'd done this before with Marie Antoinette, as she would, while the gravediggers were having lunch, sneak into the graveyard and would take a cast of her head. She would mould the head of Robespierre following his execution, and in some version of the events she moulded the head of Robespierre at the foot of the guillotine. She would do this in a sense to stay loyal to the government. There were efforts to prevent access to the corpse of Robespierre to stop relic hunters, and it was said that they tried to inter his body quickly. It was not easy to cast a death mask and a wax cast of a guillotined head. It was said, in order to create a death mask, there was a specific process. First, the deceased's hair and eyebrows were covered with clay or oil, so that the plaster would not stick to it. Next, plaster was ladled over the head of the individual. Sometimes this meant propping them up into a sitting position, as seen in the picture, or carefully doing it lying down. Next, a thread was placed from the bottom of the chin to the top of the forehead in this thinner plaster. Fourth, thicker plaster was added, and the string was removed to create a mask in two halves for easier removal. Once hard, the mould was removed and then placed back together, before a mask could be made. The plaster cast was cleaned, and then filled with modelling clay, or new plaster, to make the mask. The head of Robespierre, which was made by Madame Tussaud, shows his face looking gaunt, and it does not show the injury to his jaw that he had before the guillotining. It was said that of casting, after the execution of Robespierre, Madame Tussaud took a cast from his mutilated head, but it was not the first time his feature had been submitted to her skilful hands, he having expressed a wish that his portrait should be introduced. But the head of Robespierre is a harrowing and brutal image of the man who brought so much terror to France, and it shows him in his final seconds following the guillotine blade being released upon him. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.